Programmers love to argue about which language or editor is better and cooler than anything that ever was or will be. Wars have been fought and empires have fallen in quarrels over whether Vim or Emacs is best. This is silly, because while these are fine editors in their own right, they are also toys that aren't worth the electromagnetic charges they are stored as. I will show you how to shed these training wheels and take your place among the rightfully smug by raising your standards to the standard, the standard programming language being Lisp in its modern incarnation Clojure, and the standard editor being Ed1, or as it is formerly known, the one true, the right honorable, the standard editor, Edward Ed1 Editor. Because technologies sound more better when prefixed with modern, I will teach you modern ed, which is really just regular ed, but invoked with RL rep and the dash p option. Ed is the only uncomplected editor. It singularly performs its job, not wasting your teletypes ink on trivialities such as a prompt or error messages. It answers to your every whim, command after command, unless it is unable to do so, in which case it doesn't waste words on your incompetence, but simply replies with, huh? While it may be that you have never heard of the one true, the right honorable, the standard editor, Edward Ed1 Editor, it is a near certainty that Ed is already installed on the computer you are using right now. You could verify this by typing Ed in a terminal followed by return, but since that may leave you attempting in vain to exit Ed until the heat death of the universe, you can verify its presence with which Ed instead. Now I shall teach you Ed. Start modern ed by invoking rlrep at dash p quote greater than space quote. Once you are inside ed, you enter commands, one per line. Ed starts with an empty buffer. With a, you enter insert mode, and any consecutive lines you enter get added to this buffer. Enter period on an empty line to exit insert mode. Use w to write to a file. The p command will print the current line. 1p prints the first line, comma p prints all lines, the n command is like p, but also shows line numbers. You can delete the current line with d, or all lines with comma d, but by now your buffer is empty, so ed will go, huh? Use h, short for, huh, to see what's up. With r, you read a file, appending it to the buffer. U undoes the last edit. S does a substitution on the current line. It's followed by a slash, a regular expression, another slash, and the substitution. S only replaces the first match. Add dash G to replace all. Empty the buffer. Add some lines of text. And then admire your work. An invocation like comma N consists of two parts, an address and the command. When omitted, the address defaults to period, which means the current line. When the command is omitted, it defaults to the print command, p. An address can be a line number, a range of lines, all lines, the first line to match a pattern, and a bunch of other things. You can move the quote-unquote cursor up or down with minus or plus, which can be repeated or combined with a number. f sets the name of the file you're editing so you can save it simply with the write command w. E edits a file, reading it into the buffer and setting it as the current file name, which you can check again with f. A bang lets you run shell commands, and percentage refers to the current file name. With w bang, you can pipe the current buffer to a command. With r bang, you can append the output of a command to the buffer. I guess that's all you need to know. Oh yeah, and Q or Ctrl D quits, unless your buffer has unsafe changes. Then it will say, huh? Do Q again and it will just quit anyway. I recently blogged about mayonnaise, since as a Belgian I am not only legally required to always carry chocolate, but also have a moral duty to educate the world about mayonnaise. The thing to know about mayonnaise is that it is not sweet. There are mayonnaise-like sauces that are sweetened, maybe you even enjoy eating these at times, but don't ever confuse them with the one true, the right honorable, the standard sauce, mayonnaise. Besides mayonnaise, I also talked about a closure editor really needing two things, REPL integration and par edit. Of course, Ed has both. To start a closure REPL from Ed, 
type bank CLJ. Exit it again with Ctrl D. Let's evaluate some code. To send the buffer to the REPL, use W bang CLJ. An essential operation is to evaluate an expression and insert the result back into the buffer. To do this, first save your code and then pipe it to CLJ, reading back the result. Uh, yeah, those prompts aren't too elegant. Let's clean that up. Delete line number two and then on all lines, remove that user prompt. Okay, that looks better. So now I can write a function, there it is, and then send those lines to the REPL. So far, so good. You can see closure defined to var. So now I can switch to the REPL to try it out and, uh, this REPL isn't keeping any state, so the function's not there. This makes sense in a way. Each call to CLJ starts a new process, so all state is lost. But this is easily fixable thanks to Clojure's socket REPL. Let's add a script to launch it. First create some source and bin directories, one for Clojure source code and one for scripts. Save the code you have so far and then empty adds buffer. Add a shebang and then the CLJ invocation, passing it the socket REPL options. Now write the file and make it executable. The second script connects to it with netcat, so you get an actual REPL. Save it to bin REPL and then flip on the executable bit. Finally, create a wrapper to invoke modern add. RL rep will provide read line capabilities, allowing for line editing and command history. And the dash P option provides a prompt. Your modem is probably fast enough to handle those extra bytes. And finally, add bin to the path so it's easy to invoke helper functions like REPL. All right, time to get cracking. In a separate terminal, run bin socket REPL and then run add using bin edit. Now you can get a closure REPL with bang REPL. Eat your heart out, cider. Let's get back to our um, quote unquote quick sort. Edit the file and then add a namespace declaration at the top. Now let's pipe this to the REPL and then switch to the REPL and try it out. Nice. Although this REPL should be in the quicksort namespace now, but since we get a new socket REPL every single time, it always switches back to user. Let's fix that. Okay, now first change the socket REPL to run on port 5554 rather than 5555, and then create a new script called REPL glue. This one uses a glorious hack of my own devising, which I call the netcat 50 sandwich. The first netcat runs in a loop, accepting connections one after the other. The second netcat connects once to closure socket REPL. Whatever comes out of the first gets forwarded to the second, and through a named pipe, the result gets piped back. So it's kind of like a demultiplexer. It takes multiple incoming connections and pipes them all to a single outgoing connection. Now restart the socket REPL script, because it's listening on a different port now, and then open another terminal and start bin REPL glue. The REPL script still works on modified, but now each time you run it, it reconnects to the same socket REPL, so state like the current namespace is preserved. That's already some solid tooling we have here, but shell scripts will only get us so far. To implement par edit stuff like slurp, we'll need a bit of help from Clojure itself. Create a user.clj file where you can put REPL helpers. Remember that earlier, when we did the eval and insert, we got those pesky REPL prompts. Turns out the regular REPL isn't that great for tooling. Closure socket REPL is pretty flexible though, so let's add our own exec handler that simply reads a form, evaluates it, and exits. Now you can add a slurp function that reads two forms, adds the second into the first, and then pretty prints the result. Edit the socket REPL script again adding a second socket REPL handler on port 6666 using user exec as the accept function. 
the T command does a transfer, basically copy pasting a line. Then it's just a matter of adding a trailing backslash, changing the port and function name, and then removing the initial CLJ from the last line. Okay, that looks good. Now save it and then restart the socket REPL. Finally, create the bin slurp script that will act as an add macro. It first echoes user slurp, which will be evaluated by the exec function. We then pipe standard in into the REPL so slurp can read the forms it will work on. Let's try that out. Open source quicksort.clj again, and let's add a require stanza to the namespace declaration. Add it to line one so that it sits outside the NS form. Now write the file and then delete those two lines from the buffer, but don't save. With set, which is really just streaming add, you can print those two lines and pipe them to slurp, and then finally read the result into the start of the buffer. And there you have it. Par edit for add. Implementing the rest of par edit is left as an exercise to the viewer. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed watching this episode as much as I did making it. While this episode is very much intended as a joke, I think there are actually some valuable lessons to take home. One is that ad is not dead. The AdmonConf Twitter account has over 800 followers, and there's an extended version of ad that's also a web browser called Ad Browse. It was originally developed for blind users, but its scriptability has meant it's found users far beyond its initial user base. And that brings me to the real takeaway for me, the power of small composable tools. Add itself, Closure Socket REPL, Netcat, RLREP, SET, and Lispy building blocks like read and eval. They all serve as a reminder of the Unix philosophy of doing one thing and playing well together. And while forcing everything into a straitjacket of files and character streams can be frustratingly limiting, having such a uniform protocol does allow for things to be recombined in innovative and surprising ways. All it takes is a well-stocked toolbox and a creative mind. And if only a single one of the incantations I showed becomes part of your own lexicon, I will be more than happy. I also see this as a reminder not to obsess over tools. Much of Unix itself was written with nothing but add, and while tools grant us great powers, we shouldn't forget that they are just that, tools. They don't define us or our skills, and so we shouldn't fall into the trap of letting our tools define us, or letting them give us a sense of superiority. The same is true of the languages we program in, and the tribal sense of belonging they provide. That's all I have. Thanks for watching, and happy April Fool's Day! Lambda Island episodes are clear and focused videos demonstrating practical uses of Clojure, a modern lisp for the JVM. They are densely packed with information, but easy to follow, and will not just make you a better closure programmer, but a better programmer all around. Visit lambdaisland.com for full details, including information on individual pricing and attractive team packages.